Platform startups are changing economy stories of the world. If you analyze carefully the unicorns list of 2019, most business models end up being some type of platform. But people still asking, aren't the rise of all these startups and unicorns just fueled by VCs and wishful thinking? How can a young company such as Uber have a market cap of almost double a 100 years old traditional company? Aren't VCs just pouring money in a winner-takes-all game and hoping for profits down the road? It's much more than that. Behind every successful platform, there is a very powerful business model. Hello, I'm Gustavo Cariconde, the founder of StartupSpace.io, startup accelerator program for multi-sided platforms. And uh, we have this series of videos called Platform Design Tools. And today I interview Professor Jeffrey Parker. He is the co-author of the book Platform Revolution, published in 2016 and was in the list of uh, Forbes must-read books of 2016. He is also the co-developer of the theory of the two-sided networks. And today we're going to discuss about multi-sided platforms and how uh, their powerful business models are changing the world. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Hi, Gustavo. Thank you so much for having me today. Thanks for being here, Jeff. And uh, I'd like to start by asking a question that I get a lot from uh, startup founders and also from investors. Uh, what is the definition of a multi-sided platform? What is the definition of um, a marketplace or a digital platform? Why is this business model so unique and uh, different from other business models and why they outperform, they outgrow the other models by so much. Yeah, so so you're you're zeroing right to the hard question uh, right at the beginning. Um, so the way we describe a multi-sided platform, um, let's let's first start with just two sides. So we think of uh, a platform as a system that mediates or facilitates interactions between different types of users, and so. Um, you might have uh, a supply side user who provides content and a demand side user, um, or you could have, for example, an advertiser, um, and then they're seeking to reach uh, viewers. Um, you, the, the thing that's different about a platform as opposed to a standard way of doing business is that in a standard business environment, you tend to have a very linear value chain where you acquire information or you acquire material or merchandise, you take control of it, and then you sell it. And it's got a nice linear process through that's, you think about, you add value throughout the process. In a platform, they tend to have looser affiliations and you tend to have the users directly interact with one another and then the platform sits underneath and provides matching infrastructure, potentially technology, contracting, um, financial arrangements, sort of um, ways to, to bill and pay. And so... I know that you start studying the platforms back in the 90s when the world was very different from today. And uh, what do you think uh, nowadays... Do you think it's still possible to build multi-sided platforms, especially for startups is it, or any other companies? Is it still possible to uh, create uh, a successful platform or all the market is taken already? Yeah, so, so this is a really important question and one that you, know, you, would, you would ask as, as both an entrepreneur plus as a venture capitalist. And there are certain areas where quite honestly, um, 
you would not want to enter. So, for example, search, you know, with, with being small, but at Google very large, they have armies, thousands and tens of thousands of computer scientists and algorithm specialists, and they have a ton of data. And so they've trained their AI and machine learning. So there's not a lot of point in entering that market because it's already been won. However, I would say that even though a lot of the business to consumer has sort of been built out, there's an enormous set of opportunities on the business to business side and the business to business to consumer, sort of helping um, consumer facing organizations today that need better technology, need better access to broader markets. And so I, I, I think we're in early days yet um, in terms of how platforms spread throughout the economy. A very important concept uh, to understand for anyone trying to, to build a multi-sided market is the network effect. Can you explain network effect? Yeah. So in a lot of products, the product is the entire value. So um, a friend of mine wrote a book here, and it's called um, Product Design and Development. All right. So that's uh, two friends, Carl Ulrich and Steve Eppinger. All right. So you can buy this book. And your value for such a thing is by and large contained in the object, or I can buy this pen. And if you buy the same pen and I buy this pen, interaction is pretty minimal. On the other hand, a lot of products, if I buy it, it may become more or less valuable for you to buy it. So, for example, when you go and affiliate with Android, well, if we have a large group of consumers, then that will attract a large group of developers. And so the very act of consuming that product makes it more likely that developers will come to add value. And furthermore, the system will become better simply through your use of the product. And so this creates network effects where the more participants in the system, the more valuable the product is or the service to the users. And so they tend to grow more quickly than standard projects or products. On the other hand, they tend to shrink faster because once you get on the downside of that curve and people start to flee, then that creates a whole sort of downward spiral. So they're great on the way up and they're very quick to crash on the way down. How uh, investors, especially on a startup scene, how investors can identify evidences uh, of uh, potential uh, network effect on, on startups they are trying uh, to assess? Well, I think it, it's, it's the sort of thing where if you have a technology or you have something in the business where others can come to add value, either supply-side users or demand-side users creating value for each other, those are the types of businesses that would have strong network effect potential. So to give you an example, um, think about YouTube before Google purchased them. So YouTube was low quality. The videos weren't that good. And it was a lot of cats running around and dogs and, and animal tricks. Um, and that was user-generated content. And so that's effectively users creating value for other users. And then, of course, the system grew more professional. They brought on um, sort of channels, if you will, and it's largely become a network. But at the time, the network effect was user-to-user. -user, and you did both ratings, which helped add value. And then that helped do filtering. And then you literally created the value units for one another. Um, you might think the same way with Twitter. In Twitter, we generate value for each other by both contributing content, but also by doing thumbs up or retweets, which are votes in effect for the better content. And then the system learns that and presents it to you. And the more people who use it, the better get, it gets at doing that. 
So this was the first uh, part of my interview with Professor Jeffrey Parker, the author of uh, Platform Revolution. And if you think uh, that you must uh, carefully select the best features ever to design your platform, think twice. That's not how you design a platform and that's not how you improve and grow a multi-sided platform. And we're going to talk about that on part two of my interview with Professor Parker. So I'd like to, to ask you to please go ahead now and subscribe to my channel and watch the second part. Thank you.